Tonight, five minutes looks into a frightening crime spree. Adams in our own community have been assaulted and had identifying information stolen from them. Welcome to Five Minutes. I'm your host, Wolf Pauly. Credit cards, bank statements, photo electrons, characteristic x-rays, all things that an identity, identity thief looks for to steal information from their next victim. We bring to your attention tonight the plight of one Adam who is choosing to withhold his identity. Mr. Adam, thank you for being with us. I'm glad to share my story. Now, I understand you've been the victim of not one, but two instances of information theft. Yes, Would you care to uh, discuss the first one for us? Uh, well, I was just sitting around in my lattice position, minding my own business, when out of nowhere this x-ray slams into me. There's just so much energy. I couldn't hold on. I lost one of my electrons. To know someone has a photo electron of mine and could find out my identity, it's frightening. Truly frightening and disturbing. Let's now go to our crime analyst, J.J. Thompson, for a description of how Mr. Adams' identity could have been compromised. Thanks, Wolf. Sadly, this Adams case is nothing special. The people who seem to be directing these series of electron and x-ray interactions are responsible for thousands to millions of interaction events, and possibly more. Not all of these cases result in a loss of an electron. It seems that um, there is a particular x-ray energy needed to strip an atom of its electron. The energy necessary corresponds to the atomic number of the atom, its oxidation state, and the first two quantum numbers of the electron involved. The attackers are able to focus their attack on an area of about a thousand square microns and are able to sp specifically target surfaces to a depth of one nanometer for a sample size of about a hundred billion atoms. In other words, this crime directly affects a around one in a million atoms. This is a small enough figure that the material community as a whole is largely unperturbed. This is, however, a devastating situation for any atom to find itself in. Thank you, JJ. That was enlightening. Now, Mr. Adam, if you would please recount for us the second encounter you had. Well, it happened a lot like before. I was minding my own business, and this time an electron crashed into me at thousands of electron volts. The stray electron displaced one of my own electrons, and bringing back down one of my higher energy electrons caused me to emit a photon a characteristic x-ray. JJ, back to you. The emission of characteristic x-rays is typical for atoms undergoing electron microscopy. However, if these criminals are, were interested in harvesting personally identifying information, they may decide to collect and analyze the, these x-rays. This is a crime known as energy dispersive spectroscopy. In this case, the attackers were able to achieve very fine lateral resolution, targeting an area of about a thousand square nanometers on the surface, but penetrating to a depth up to a hundred nanometers. And if they succeed in collecting Adam's characteristic x-ray, they can estimate Adam's atomic number. Can you comment on what sorts of atoms are at risk for this crime? Yes, Wolf. The attackers may decide to target any atoms in the SEM sample. However, high atomic weight atoms are most at risk as victims of this sort of analysis because they tend to be probed with higher electron fluxes and tend to emit more x-rays. Thank you, JJ, and thank you, Mr. Adam, for sharing your story with us. Of course, anytime. We must raise the question, what could motivate these attacks? It's possible that the attackers are logging personally identifying information, such as atomic numbers and bonding states, about vast numbers of victims. Some have suggested they may be constructing a sort of census of our atomic community. Of course, as journalists, we can only speculate as to why these persons would be interested in a chemical description of the surfaces of our home particles. That's all the time we have for tonight. This is Wolf Polly saying good night from five minutes. Join us next week as we explore a truly horrifying tale of diffraction in the workplace.